That's not good. Dude, that fog out there is super creepy. How's it going? Why am I carrying in a box of fresh plastics? Well, we're making a motographic kit today. If you remember, about three months ago, I did a video making a graphic kit for Yami Noob, which was for a bike build project he was working on that was sponsored by Partzilla. Well, Partzilla saw the work that we did, loved it, and they're actually building a bike of their own now. So they reached out to us to do the graphic kit for this thing. And of course I said, hell yes, let's do this. And not only did they do that, but they also gave me pretty much full creative freedom to do whatever I want, which is pretty awesome. So I figured this was a good time to fire up the camera and bring you guys along on this one, update you on where I'm at with making these things. So let's get this going. Actually, one second, uh, do me a favor, please. Hit the thumbs up button for me now before you forget. That shit really helps. So for our bike, we are doing a 2005 Honda CRF 450 and Partzilla is actually doing a complete rebuild series on this bike before they give it away. So you might wanna check that out because it's probably gonna be cool. When we met for the design brief, they really only had two stipulations for me. The first is that they didn't want the bike to be some big crazy billboard, you know, Partzilla covering the entire thing. And the second was they wanted to incorporate the Honda logo into it, which I figured out is because they are a supplier of OEM parts. So that totally makes sense. Otherwise I said, have at it, dude. The look of this bike is completely up to you. And I was just like, ah, yes. I love when that happens. So I wanted to go with something clean, something classy, and something that just looked fast as shit. So this is what I came up with, and I am super hyped on the way this whole kit came together. It looks so good. Obviously, I went with a full-blown racer style on this one because I felt like that was a style that was going to identify with their customer base best. In order to get their branding front and center without slapping giant logos on this thing, I decided to break down the colors of their branding, which is black, white, and red, and I carry those colors throughout the entire bike. So when you see this thing, you know it's a Partzilla bike. I also incorporated all the logos of the other companies putting parts into this bike, except I've made those logos a darker gray to kind of push them a little bit more into the background as not to take away from the Partzilla branding because that should be front and center. They didn't have a specific number for me to use on this thing, so I went with the number 16 because that's the letter P in the alphabet, so I thought that was a little bit clever. And then as for incorporating the Honda stuff in there, I came up with my own custom CRF type design I thought looked a little bit cooler, a little bit faster. And then the wing itself, that was actually the starting point for this whole design. I was looking at the shape of this rad shroud and right there in that corner, if you look at the shape of that corner and the shape of the wing, it's like it was meant to happen. I was just like, dude, this, this has got to go here. So I actually slapped the wing in there and I built the entire design off of that. So I love the way that came out. The placement of that thing is Perfect. And then I came up with this little mock-up just to kind of get a general idea of what the bike's gonna look like. When it all comes together, I put black rims on it because black rims just make everything better. But I'm already set up for this thing. My print and cut files are ready to go. So let's get out and turn some machines on. <laughs> Gave the old girl a quick cleaning and nozzle check. And I pretty much run a full manual clean and nozzle check on this thing like every three or four days. A little bit overkill for some people, but man, if you wanna consistently produce top tier results with one of these machines, that's a good habit to get into. I mean, or don't, cause it'll just make me look better. <laughs> and once again, I'm using the trusty old substance X1 for my print media. Something I don't think I covered in the last video was I actually use the matte print media rather than the gloss. I've tested a whole bunch of different substrates in this machine, gloss, matte, and it seems like matte is the way to go. It's gonna differ from machine to machine, obviously, because they all have different ink systems and different ways of laying it down, but it seems like with this machine and the TR2 ink system that matte is the way to go, at least that's my preference. The matte media definitely gives me a much more solid and dense color. You do lose a little bit of fine detail, but we're talking really, really small stuff, like two point text is where it starts to fall apart. The gloss media, however, does give you that detail. I've knocked out like one and a half point to three point text, super clean all day on this machine. I was told that was impossible. Don't know what they're talking about because I do it all the damn time. So the detail on the gloss is insane, but you do lose a bit of that color coverage. You can tell it's a printed, piece of material. Whereas on the mat, it kind of gives you the effect as if it's an old school screen printed graphic. It's got that super solid color. So when it comes to printing big stuff like this, like moto graphics, the mat media, definitely the way to go. Cause you're not getting into super fine detail like that pretty much ever. <laughs> We're 
we're dialed. Let's do this thing. Fuck me, why is that a darker black? That's not good. Yeah, there's some fuckery going on there. And pause, we gotta fix a quick mistake here. This always happens when I'm filming a video. Whenever I'm not filming, this is such a rare thing. You guys watching this are like, yeah, I bet. Anyways, there are a couple parts in here where I forgot to switch the stock swatch color black to the CMYK true 100% black. You can definitely see it here in the fender because those two blacks are up against each other and yeah, One's a lot darker than the other. I also looked at the file and it happened in a couple other spots too. I forgot like one of the wings and another little patch on one of the other parts. So I better fix that real quick and reprint what we just did. Well, other than that one little hiccup, we're dialed. This thing looks so damn good. That gray, gray on black together came out even better than I thought it would. I can't wait to see this thing after the laminate goes on, but first we gotta let this thing out gas. And we're back. We're gonna get this thing all wrapped up today, but before we do that, I've gotta mention, we've got a sponsor today, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community filled with thousands of killer classes to help you step up your game in pretty much any way imaginable. When it comes to making these types of graphics, coming up with the designs, dealing with the cut patterns, setting up all the files to send to the machines. That all happens in Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw if you're into that kind of thing. Well, Skillshare has a ton of classes on Adobe Illustrator to help you guys get moving even if you have zero experience. If you're a total beginner, I recommend starting with this class right here by Daniel Scott. And even if you're an intermediate user, you will pick up a few things in this one. And since they're sponsoring today's video, Skillshare is giving away a free trial membership to the first 1,000 of you guys who join the community using the link in the description below. So definitely check that out because that's how I learned how to do this stuff. So again, on this kit, we are using the Substance Ultra Curve 1500 in the gloss. Originally, we had talked about doing this kit in matte, which I thought would have been sick, but after I got a good look at the template for this bike, I was like, Ugh, I don't know, man, because the rear half of the bike has a lot of material coverage, whereas the front half of the bike, not so much. There's a lot of exposed areas of plastic, like on the front fender and the fork guards. And when you have that high gloss plastic finish against the matte graphic, it creates a lot of contrast. So with this template design, having a ton of coverage in the back and not a lot in the front, it would just felt really off balance and kind of looks like shit. I've seen other bikes out there like that that definitely confirm my thoughts on that. I think really the only effective way to pull off matte graphics nicely is if you have a template that covers most of the bike or at least a balanced amount of the bike. That's the only times I've ever seen it really look good. But otherwise, when you have it kind of broken up weirdly like that, it just doesn't look right. So in the end, I talked them into going gloss on this thing. I think it's the right way to go. I guess we'll find out. that looks good. Let's get it in the cutter. I still haven't improved upon this shitty table setup, by the way. Man, I don't know what it is about cutting this material, but something about it is just so satisfying. However, even though I don't make a ton of these things yet, I pretty much only do it for select clients, but I already want a flatbed cutter for this. It would make life so much easier because weeding those super big, kind of heavy, ultra sticky pieces of material sucks. Anyways, it's time for the fun part. Putting these on the plastics. Oh man, this came together to be such a good looking kit. Super bummed that I'm not gonna see the whole bike come together in person. Definitely glad I went with the gloss laminate on this thing after seeing it all together. Matt would've looked terrible, especially on this front fender like I was talking about earlier. Now that we got gloss to gloss, everything looks super clean. And man, this, this front fender piece, dude, I think this is my favorite piece of the whole bike. No idea why, it just looks really cool. And it's funny because when I was designing this thing, this was kind of my least favorite piece. Sorry, I can't show you guys the finished bike on this one. That's kind of out of my hands. 
Not sure exactly when they're gonna start, but I'm pretty sure Partzilla is gonna cover a lot of this on their YouTube channel coming up soon. And I'm pretty sure they're giving this bike away in December sometime. Don't quote me on that, but I'm like 90% sure. So keep an eye out if you wanna win a free CRF 450 that I put a little something into. Holy <laughs> shit, that was a major, that's what he said. <laughs> And in other news, before I wrap this up, I started a second YouTube channel that I linked down in the description below, so go subscribe to it. I've always, always wanted to start another channel about cameras and editing and all the cool stuff that goes into making these videos because ever since I started the channel, uh, it became a huge passion of mine. I'm a massive camera nerd now, so I figure I got some cool shit to share with everybody and I'm gonna start a YouTube channel to cover all that stuff. So if you're into cameras, you're a dork like me, then go subscribe to that thing. It's gonna be pretty awesome. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, ding the bell, all that good stuff. We'll see you again in the next one. You're destroying the box, fat shit. Oh, I know that shot was good. <laughs> they have so generously given us 1,000 free fucking, I can't remember what the line is. I've done so many of these and I don't remember any of it. I really wish I could, this freaky motherfucking, what was on this? That is the worst. Where's the WD-40, damn it? I don't even know where to spray, so I'm spraying everywhere. What is that? Different chair, fuck this thing. Lawn chair? Oh yeah, that works.